How many times have you ever passed by a beggar on the street? Or how many times has a beggar come up to you and asked for food or money or something? And then later on, maybe the same person comes around and asks for more. And maybe there'll be others that will come on in. And you, and you have this feeling like, oh gosh, I've got to do this again? In Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Jesus starts out the Sermon on the Mount by saying this, Blessed are the poor in spirit, because to them belongs the kingdom of heaven. What does Jesus mean here? Looking it up, what Jesus was saying is helpless, completely unable to help oneself. Or in other words, a beggar. Blessed are the beggars in spirit because to them belongs the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. In Luke chapter 18, this chapter starts out with a woman who was a widow. And widows in the time of Jesus were cast out on the street because the man normally provided the source of income. And once the man died, then widows had to go out on the street and beg. And so this woman, this woman, this widow went to this judge and says, give me what I deserve. Because she probably had some sort of inheritance or something like that. She was day after day after day asking him, saying, give me justice. And finally, the judge went crazy and said, okay, I'm going to give it to her. And so he gave her what she deserved just because she persevered. This woman was in spirit a beggar. She was going after it because she was desperate and helpless and had no other way. Later on, you look at another story, the Pharisee and the publican. Well, publican uh, is another word for tax collector, okay? And tax collectors at the time of Jesus were the people uh, whose profession was the most hated. And so you have these two people, the Pharisee, the religious leader, very well respected, that goes into the temple and prays and says, oh, look at me, I'm so great. I've done all these great religious things. While the tax collector, he barely went into the entrance. He didn't even lift up his head. He was looking on the ground this whole time. And he was saying, God, have mercy on me. And Jesus wraps up the story by saying, it wasn't the Pharisee that was justified that went home and God justified him. It was the hated tax collector because it was the tax collector that said, have mercy on me. Because the tax collector realized that he, pro that he probably, like most tax collectors at that time, ripped off people. In the same chapter, we find the rich young ruler who was not only rich, not only a person of position, but he followed God's commands. And so you think, wow, this person should be justified. This person should be right before God. And Jesus said, you just lack one thing. Sell everything that you have. Come follow me. Give to the poor. Follow me. What was the response of this rich, young ruler? He went away sad. Why? Because he trusted in his riches more that he trusted in Jesus that could provide so much more than this earth could ever offer him. Later on in chapter 18, we run into blind Bartimaeus. And he wasn't just a beggar, but he was blind. And so he had no idea who was giving to him or, uh, or who was walking by, but he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he started calling out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And, and all the people around him were going, shut up, don't yell. And what was his response? He yelled even louder, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And he was causing a stir, so much so that Jesus, when he was walking by, he stopped. And Jesus stopped and looked to him. And the people were saying, Hey, Jesus is calling for you. And what happened? You can find the, the similar story in Mark, and in, especially in Mark chapter 10, verse 50. Bartimaeus jumps up. 
and he throws off his coat and he leaps towards Jesus, which I think is a miracle for a blind man to do. But he comes towards Jesus and Jesus asks him, what do you want? And Bartimaeus, with all the faith that he had, said, I want to see. And Jesus said, because of your faith, have your, have your vision restored. And he was immediately healed. Zacchaeus, short tax collector, couldn't see Jesus when Jesus was passing through. And so what did he do? He climbed a tree to see him. What, this guy's climbing a tree? So Zacchaeus climbed a tree and it created such a stir, Jesus was walking by and he stopped. And he didn't even ask Zacchaeus, well, what do you want? He simply looked at him and said, Zacchaeus, come on down. I'm having dinner at your place tonight. Later on, we read in this story, Jesus is in the house of Zacchaeus, and Zacchaeus said, Lord, he addressed him as Lord. Lord, I will give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone with the remaining half I have, I will give back four times as much as I've defrauded or stolen from people. Jesus restored Zacchaeus's identity. He restored his identity and he said, now you are saved. You are a son of Abraham. And Zacchaeus, with all of the riches that he had, he saw his helplessness. He was rich, but he was a beggar in his heart. And he longed for the fulfillment that only Jesus can bring. You know, you can have people that are helpless and without a way, desperate. And you know what can happen? They could stay in that poverty. They could stay in that. But there were certain ones like Bartimaeus and the widow and the tax collector. They had faith in God that they could ask with a broken heart, completely helpless, and God justified them. God answered their prayers. In our moment of desperation, Jesus hears our cry. And when we have suffered for years and years, that it's not just a moment, but a long time, Jesus hears us. He will hear our prayer. And just like the widow, when justice did not come to her immediately, Jesus said, will not justice come speedily to those who call out day and night? So Jesus is waiting for you. He waits for me to come to him because he will answer. He will answer our prayers. He is listening. And if we come with the heart, even if it's a heart of brokenness, a heart of helplessness, he hears and he will respond. May God bless you today. May he answer especially prayers that you've been offering up for a long, long time. May he answer those in your life today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. Just hit the button down there and you'll get notification of when a new video comes out. And if you've been blessed by this video, and don't pass it along. Recommend it to your friends and family and loved ones. Thanks so much for, for watching, and God bless you.